Today I have a simple reminder for us uh, from the book of Acts, again, just like last week. And this week we're, 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 we're looking at Luke's account of a boy named Eutychus, right? Eutychus, whose, whose name means good fortune. And you could say he definitely had that. You see, Paul has been preaching late into the night, as some preachers are known to do at times. He just, like, the text even implies that he's just going on and on, and it's really going long, right? Like, this preacher, at this moment, Paul has been really talking for a while. And there's this young man named Eutychus, and we we believe that he's somewhere between, like, 7 to 14 years of age, according to the words that are used to describe him. So this 7 to 14-year-old, imagine that, this 7 to 14-year-old boy, he kind of gets warm, he goes, he sits in the window, and because of the the oils in the air that are, or the oils that are burning the lamps and the the warmth and the people and Paul's voice droning on, Eutychus there in the window falls asleep. So if you've ever fallen asleep in a sermon, like if you've ever fallen asleep when I was talking, I'm not worried about it, don't worry about it, it's biblical, right? Just don't do it in the third story window, because that's what Eutychus did. He fell asleep there in the windowsill and fell out three stories to his death. At least like 24 or more feet. And it says in the verse just prior to this that they picked up his body and it was dead. He was dead. So this young man tumbles from this window and and Paul is understandably consumed with grief for the boy, for his family. Uh, And and he runs and he embraces the young man's body. In fact, it, it puts it this way. Luke puts it this way in Acts 20 verse 10. He says, Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. So the verse prior, he was dead, and now Paul has thrown himself on him, has embraced him, and he's alive. Like, I I looked up a a little bit of the wording that Luke uses here, and it's interesting. He uses the same word that he uses in the book of Luke in his, like, first volume, right? When he's talking about the prodigal son story that Jesus tells, the story of this boy who you know, you, you you know the story there in Luke 15 and, and he goes and he blows his father's fortune and he comes back and in a situation where no father in the ancient Near East would recognize his son as a son any longer. And he goes back and that, and Jesus says that the father had been watching the road and that he runs, he throws off all his own dignity as the man of the house and he runs and he embraces the lost son, the prodigal son. And this word for him embracing his prodigal son, this is the kind of embrace that Paul gives poor Eutychus and his lifeless body. And through Paul's embrace and his prayers and his care, and by the power of God, life returns. And this, of course, encourages everyone, like as you can imagine, to listen to Paul a little bit more closely. That uh, stirs up the night for sure. Like this Jesus that Paul is talking about, where Paul says this Jesus gives life and offers life to everyone, that he conquered death. Well, here's a straight example of this life giver giving life to Eutychus. You know, today I just want to remind you, Jesus is the life giver. It's Jesus who Paul was there to represent, to preach, to proclaim without shame, right? It is Jesus who wants to throw himself over you, to wrap his arms around you, to give you life, to embrace you with love, 
to offer not 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 just life eternally but life right now like jesus said i came that you might have life and have it to the full have it overflowing have it overwhelming have it an incredible amount that that life with jesus isn't just this apathetic ho hum avoid this don't do that not that kind of life but this is the life giver the one that gives you life to the full, the one that raises young boys from the dead, the one who loves and embraces you. Today, I want you to feel to, to feel the embrace of Jesus, to look for the life that he promises you today. Look around no matter what's going on. Take a breath. Realize that he's given you life today. Whatever today holds or is held for you, no matter the trial, he's going before you. He is going with you. He is giving you life to live. May you have it to the full. Let me pray for you, God. Thank you so much for being our life giver. May we recognize it not just in terms of our hope for eternity, but in our life today. And may we remember that you want to embrace us. I pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you.